Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another exciting event here at Tech Corners. And I want to give a huge shout out to Regina. Where is she? Thank you, Regina, for coordinating all your hard work that goes into this. I mean, it's like an hour, but it takes her weeks, I'm sure, to put this all together. Uh, I'm Lisa Lee, and I'm really incredibly excited to introduce Lubav Azuria, the Chief Creative Officer at BCBG Max Azuria Group, a global fashion house with one of the hottest labels and brands in the fashion industry today that styles everyday modern women like you and I to, in the contemporary price point range, to supermodels and Hollywood celebrities. She joined the company as a designer in 1991 and was named creative director in 1996. Under her influence, and I've been told that she's also known as the muse of the company, <laughs> was named, um, uh, evolved from an emerging line to one of America's leading design houses, including being the first American design house to absorb an esteemed French fashion house, Hervé Leger. She's joining us here today at Google to share an exclusive screening of the uh, 2015 Spring Runway Show and to provide it with some personal commentary. Absolutely. And if that isn't enough, I'm really impressed that she's also a mother of six, three of her own. <laughs> so you will have to tell us your secret on how you balance all that and obviously it looks so beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> so welcome to Google. Thank you. Hi, everyone. How's everybody doing today? Good? Well, I'm very happy to be here. Um, so it's very exciting, and uh, I think we should start, right? Yes. <laughs> so, you know, really just to start off so that everyone gets to know you a little bit better, if you can tell us a little bit about yourself and, you know, some of your passions and how that translates into your, your personal style and uh, the work that you do. So um, I'm originally from Ukraine, Kiev. Um, how many of you are actually um, from not, were not born here? Ah, OK. All right. So you'll love this story. Uh, so basically, I was born um, in, in Kiev. And um, I think that your cultural background sometimes defines you. I think uh, when I was growing up, um, I was meant to be a prima ballerina. So from the age of four and a half to five, actually about five years old, where they come and they test you, how limber you are and everything else, you sort of, your life is determined. And so I trained in, um, there's like little satellite groups of Kirov Ballet, so that's how my initial training was. But my true passion was always art. And I loved drawing and painting, and I took art classes. And Anyway, um, in 19, um, 80s, um, Brezhnev signed an agreement with um, Israel to let the Jews out because we're, I'm Jewish, and there was a huge prosecution against Jews. We couldn't attend universities. We couldn't um, actually get higher jobs. We couldn't do a lot of things. So my parents um, were lucky enough to leave, and so we immigrated to United States. Um, and the place that we end up and it's San Antonio, Texas. <laughs> That's right, out of all the places, it was San Antonio, Texas. And so I really started growing up there. And uh, I have to say that I never thought of fashion as fashion. Like, I didn't know the fashion industry existed in uh, former Soviet Union. It was like everybody was wearing the same thing over and over again. So I didn't really realize that there's a fashion world. All I wanted to do was to be an art history, art history professor. So I studied art. I was really passionate about it. And obviously, I danced as well on the side. Um, and so um, in 1986, there was an oil crisis in Texas. And a lot of people lost their jobs. And so we moved from San Antonio, Texas. And I know it's a lot of story, but there's really, there's a, there's a, <laughs> there's a good point to it. So we moved from San Antonio, Texas to uh, Los Angeles. And I remember being in LA, and I'm 18 years old. And I don't know what my future is. All I know is that I want to be in art. I want to be in something that really has the possibilities are endless, and I can create something that can make a difference. So anyway, I'm in Los Angeles, and it's two weeks after I arrived there, and I decided to go shopping. And I went on Wilshire Boulevard. So I'm just walking on Wilshire. I don't know if you guys, any of you know LA, but it's like a, anyway, there's large department stores there. So I was walking by one of the department stores, and there was the most beautiful dress in the window. I mean, the dress was so stunning. And I decided that I'm just going to go in. I've never been to this department store, but I'm going to go in and try it on. Um, 
as I walk in, I ask for the dress that was in the window, and the salesperson there said, well, it's on the second floor, we're having a trunk show. They gave me the dress, and so I went into the dressing room, put it on. It was stunning. It was the most beautiful thing I've ever had on. I started twirling in the dress, I mean, just having a good time until I saw the price tag. <laughs> And the price, now remember this is 1986, so the price tag was $3,000. And I remember my car was $1,500. <laughs> so that was not gonna work. And um, at that moment, this, as I was looking at myself in the mirror, at that moment the pain hit me. The pain was that I'm not good enough. What am I doing here? People like me don't wear clothes like that. Like really like all the negative things just started flowing through me. And I started crying, but sort of tearing up more. And then I pulled myself together. I looked in the mirror and I said, if I ever, ever become a designer, I will never make clothes that are that expensive. I will never make a woman feel this pain. Nobody deserves to feel this pain. And I made that promise. I took off my dress. Now again, I didn't know that I wanted to be a designer. I had no idea. Took off the dress, put it on the hanger, zipped it up thanked the salespeople, and left. Next day, believe it or not, not next day, but like two days after, uh, fashion school came in and I filled out saying I like fashion, I like this. My whole life, from that moment on, it's like in that movie when you make a promise, everything like starts opening for you. Everything in my life from that point on, I went to fashion school, I filled out application. Next thing I knew I was in the fashion school. Next thing I knew I had a job. Next thing, it was just everything was just incredibly, it's like my destiny was created at that moment. And I don't know if any of you had that experience, but it's just sort of you do one thing and you make a promise and then everything in your life changes. And so to me, fashion represents uh, it's not just about clothes, but it's about making a difference. Do you know what I'm saying? It's about making, I believe that if you make a woman feel and look beautiful, she can make this world a better place. It's almost like it all crystallized for you. Yeah. yeah. And so from that point on, how is that, that experience, how, did that, how does that translate to your designs today and the, the labels and what you do? Well, it translates in every way. Uh, I mean, till this day, I fit every single piece. You know, I also kind of realized that, uh, for example, I don't know if you know anything about making clothes, but you can take um, a dress that you're wearing, for example. <laughs> um, you know, it's a, you can take a dress like this and you can have it 10 times more expensive if you don't think about the marker and the fabrication and how it moves. So we really engineer everything to give you the best price that we can, because I believe that a woman has to feel good. You know, most, most designers don't appreciate, I think, the consumer and their spending power or their, their knowledge, I think I would want to say. Like, women are so much smarter. You don't have to be in fashion business to understand fashion. You don't have to be. You know what you like. And that's the most important thing. You know, fashion is about connecting with something. So what I do is I create clothes that I want to wear. I'm a woman. It's, it's so interesting because in design, we always think that we're somebody else, but we're not. We're women. Creating majority of my team is uh, also females. And then we love what we do. We get excited about the product. We can't wait to wear it ourselves. We can't wait to create product that we respect and want to wear. And I think that's the difference. I think, you know, we don't have to do a lot of things. Like, I will not um, create clothes just to create clothes. I really want somebody wearing it and feeling beautiful and elegant. And I believe that you live one life. You know, how do you want to live your life? Do you want to hide behind clothes or do you want to celebrate yourself? And if somebody would take a picture of you every single day, would you be proud of that? You know, one life. And so that's, to me, that's very important. That's really, really inspirational. And I think it's something for people to keep in mind. But you know, if many of us here, I'm sure, are busy, you know, working women, as well as some of us have kids. And so how do you balance that in terms of getting up every day and, and to think about yourself first, as opposed to your, you know, your family and, and right. all the other responsibilities well, that like you Well, like you said, think about yourself first. I mean, there's a um, safety message on the plane. You know, it says, when the oxygen mask comes down, <laughs> put it on yourself first. 
and then on your children. And I think a lot of women don't do that. We tend to take care of everybody else, and then we feel like something's wrong with us. And I think truly taking care of yourself is so important. And I'm not talking about vanity. I'm talking about, you know, exercising, eating right, you know, doing the things that you love. If you love, for example, I don't know, rollerblading, go rollerblade. If you love, you know, uh, making jewelry, if you love anything, you know what I'm saying, make sure you're doing it because that is what's going to satisfy who you are and create, you know, in life you don't find yourself, you create yourself. So create the type of person that you want to be. You know, most people go around the world go, oh, you know, this person is so chic, she was born that way. She wasn't born that way. She created herself. Do you know what I'm saying? She watched, she learned, and she wanted to be the person, so you become that. And I think in terms of balance and being a mom, I think being a mom is one of the greatest gifts in the world. I mean, those kids are our greatest teachers, and yes, they're tough, but that's because they're trying to find who they are, you know, and we just have to let them grow. And I think being friends with your children is so important. I think we're always trying to tell them what to do, and I think don't. I think they'll do the right thing. I've noticed that the less I tell them what to do, the more strict they are on themselves, you know, and I have five daughters, so. It's kind of like, it's a party at the house. So I have to ask, because my daughter, they always decide what they want to wear, and it doesn't always match. Oh. <laughs> and you're like, you really want to put those two together? But, so do you let them experiment and let them? Yes, actually, I think that's how you create fashion, by being wrong. You know, I don't think fashion, I mean, we don't match here, you know. Uh, I think it's about, you know, it's, it's a piece that she likes. She probably likes this great pair of shoes, and she just want, you know, it's, it's about certain things that, they love and let them do it. I mean, I remember my kids, I couldn't get them out of Halloween costumes for like a year. I mean, and I said, hey, if you want to be a superwoman, go ahead. Every single day, you know, or tutus, or I mean, that was like number one search word, right? Or like an um, item, tutu skirts. <laughs> Mine is in the car with the bathing suit and flip flops. <laughs> No, um, but it is. It's, you know, just let her be. I mean, obviously, she has a reason for it. How beautiful is that? That's great. And so you often hear people define their style. They mm -hmm. say, you know, I'm casual or I'm, um, I like the whole bohemian look. Do you believe in that or do you feel like it's, like you, you talked about experimenting? And so mm -hmm. what is behind, you know, that definition? And do you encourage women to, to sort of throw that out the window and say, just wear what you feel is most comfortable and defines you for the day? Mm -hmm. I think it depends on your lifestyle. I think that most of us, you know, I mean, it depends if you want to blend in. Like, I think that women should experiment with stuff. I think that's playing. Do you remember when we used to play with clothes, dress up, and all this? What happened to us? We stopped playing. We started experimenting. We, start, we stopped living. I think fashion is about, if you're taking fashion too serious, you're doing it wrong. You're supposed to go in and try every single thing in the store and have fun. Because women do not dress based on trends. They dress based on their body shape, period. You know what's going to look good on you. Right away, you don't, you don't need a salesperson to tell you. So you know if you look good in strapless dresses, you wear strapless dresses. If you look good in V-neck, you look good in V-neck. And you're gonna continue that sort of, you know, that's because you know it. You put it on and it's right. And that's the difference. And I think in terms of whether your comfort obviously is extremely important, but you can be elegantly comfortable. So when you are feeling a little down or maybe feeling you don't quite have the confidence, what's your go-to outfit that you'd sort of recommend people think um, about? A really big muumuu. <laughs> <laughs> Sunglasses. <laughs> yeah. And Th those it. are the days yes. where you're just having a good day. <laughs> I love mumus. I have nothing against mumus. <laughs> They're great. And so you talked about your, your background and your culture and you know, dance, for instance. Mm -hmm. Has that influenced the, you know, your focus on comfort? Because obviously, as yes. a dancer, you need to be able to flow with the clothes. And how has that influenced your life? Well, I think as a dancer, one thing that I learned is discipline. I think you have to be really disciplined as a dancer, and you have to be very consistent. And the other thing, I learned how a woman's body moves. So I actually fit every single garment in BCBG. 
There's nothing that leaves, except for BCBG generation, but BCBG Max Azure or Har Villager, the runway line, I actually physically fit it on our fit model. And I go over all the details. And I actually put it on myself as well, because I want to know how it feels. Because I believe that if you need alterations, then it, you know, most women think that there's something wrong with their bodies. There's nothing wrong with your body. Your body is beautiful. There's something wrong with the fit of the clothes. You know, there's some there's amazing brands out there that have great uh, quality and they look good, but you put it on and you look dumpy. And I think understanding proportions, I think, is very important. Understanding textures, fabric, colors mm -hmm. is important. So when I'm actually in the fitting room, by the way, my fit model is not somebody who's very young. She's actually in her 50s. And the reason why is you can take a, a beautiful young model and everything's going to look good on her. But you take a 50-year-old model and you try to make her look amazing, that's the difference. And so I actually do the opposite. I take something that I think she's beautiful anyway, but it's just more of appreciating what happens and how, what, where you need a lift. And in terms of comfort, I mean, I think that's one of the challenges. Like, I know for myself, wearing heels, it looks great. I'd love to wear them every day, but it just doesn't seem that comfortable. Right. What's your recommendation for, you know, balancing practicality with well, I think, style? I think the same thing. I think, you know, have a pair of shoes with the heels in your bag. I mean, right now, bags look like suitcases. Anyway, um, you know, I just think it's important, like, if you're, if you're in a meeting, it's nice to wear a heel. You know, you're, you're sitting down anyway. You know, if you're running around, obviously, it's better to wear something that's comfortable. I mean, I run a marathon, so my feet grow a half a size every time I run. It's getting ridiculous. Um, but... Um, Anyway, I like comfortable. I always have either flip-flops or something in my bag just so that I can relieve pain. But I have to tell you, technology. Let's talk about it. You guys are in the head of technology, right? Why can't we get little massage pads inside the shoes <laughs> so you can just plug in so when you're sitting there, you actually get in a massage? <laughs> and what about remote control luggage? Can we talk about when you're traveling? There's remote control cars. Why isn't there luggage remote control? Just, just follows put you it all, wherever you go. Yeah, you just go, right? <laughs> I'm serious. There's so much to invent. You know, I was sitting and having a conversation with someone yesterday, and they were talking about all this technology for clothes, and, you know, your clothes can light up in the dark. And I thought, well, okay, you know? <laughs> If you have a purpose for that, I think it's important, you know, but they are in, there's so much innovation in textiles right now. You know, there's fabrics that make you feel good. They have a little bit of copper in it and something else. I mean, um, there's so much innovation. It's very exciting because the clothes are supposed to protect you and make you feel beautiful and make you feel um, comfortable, you know, but not everywhere do you want to be comfortable. Remember, the moment you're really comfortable, that means that you're not you're not living, you're existing. Like, it's nice to be a little bit uncomfortable in everything, because that's how you're moving forward. You know, think about it. Right. If you're too comfortable, you're not probably producing what you could be producing. If you have a little discomfort, like, I'm always looking at the collection, and if there's something, if it's too perfect, I'm like, no, something is really wrong with that. <laughs> it's actually a motto we live by here at Google, right? Yeah. Always trying things that are uncomfortable. We're yes. always uncomfortably excited. So. Absolutely. I think that's how you live and you grow and you evolve. You know, complacency doesn't get you anywhere. Right. So talking about technology, I'd love to ask you, do you have a favorite Google product? Um, yes. Google image search. I can't live without it. Yes. Um, Absolutely. And, and how do you use it, and how does it Everything. influence it's just literally, we search for images. I remember we used to go to libraries and sign the books out and bring them and then copy them and then put them in folders. I mean, I still, I don't throw away anything, so <laughs> really bad idea. Um, and so now it's amazing. You can just really find anything, save it, use it, print it out. I mean, we make the most amazing inspiration boards. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah. Great. And what about in terms of social media? I mean, I think there's you know, Twitter, there's Instagram, there's Google Social. Um, how do you use that to connect with your, you, you know, your, your customers and to get to know them better? Well, in, in when we first, I remember in 19, uh, when we did our first Run My Show in 1996, um, in New York, 
people didn't know who we were. And uh, we were the first contemporary company to show in during the Fashion Week in New York with designers. And I don't know if you know the, the whole idea. Designers is, is really a price point. That's all it is. You know, everything is designed. There's no product that's made generically. Even T-shirt. I think T-shirts are the hardest things to fit anyway, because you need to get that fit right. Anyway, going back to, so whoever reviewed us defined us. And they put us into a certain box. And there's nothing we can do about it, because at that time, there was no social media to tell your story, to tell your message, to inspire, to connect, to really make the consumer or your audience understand you as a company, your DNA. So I feel with social media now, it is incredible. We tell our stories, we tell our passions, we connect, whether it's Twitter or Pinterest or you know, Instagram, whatever it is, we're telling stories. And they're curated because it's our point of view. That's how we would want to see things done. And I think you see the aesthetics, you see our sensibility, you see our passion, you see our creativity, you see who we connect to, and that's unique, you know, to each brand. And I love that everybody is on social. I really do. And I love the Twitter. I love that you can send messages to the world about what you're doing and connect. That's great. And so how does that influence, in terms of like design, like do you ever think about, oh, someone's given me this great idea, and Absolutely. we need to move sort of a different direction than what we were originally thinking. Does that I happen? Think, yeah, you know what? Um, so what usually happens is that we get suggestion and we meet people. I, I'm very big about meeting people and understanding their needs, you know, because obviously we don't create everything for ourselves, but there's a definite need. So through social media, we can, we have, we love our fans, or um, you know, we have like week of chic or things that we do to really get closer and understand what the what our fans like, you know. So I think in terms of ideas, I don't know. We're so creative, too creative. We need to be more <laughs> operational people. <laughs> and what are some of the latest inspirations? Oh that my gosh, have, so many. You know, kind of come across so many. When you just, do you wake up in the morning thinking about them? Or when, as you're just walking down the street, you see things that I spark think, interest? Lisa, I think it's everything. I think being here, you never know. I might do some primary colors and one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, I think the, the, the idea is that what you, what you connect to. You know, I, I think the art is very important, because I think, it, does any of you paint or draw, right? Self-expression, how difficult it is when you put it, when you actually step away from it and put it on a wall. So I think art to me is very personal and what we connect to is personal. So that's huge influence. Travel is great. Um, you know, textiles, people. I work with the most creative, amazing, innovative people and I'm obsessed with them. And most of the time they come up with ideas and I'm just like, mm, not so sure. <laughs> like, brilliant, I love it. <laughs> No, I think it's really working with the team and really kind of connecting. And I think they bring a lot of ideas and then we share ideas. My overall job is not just to design, it's to, it's to really bring clarity. You know, because if we throw everything against the wall and see what sticks, it takes too long. So my, I'm almost like I edit a point of view to make sure that, you know, it's one thing being creative, it's another thing being successful. You know, we create for a woman and we want her to feel and look beautiful. And obviously we're not gonna do three sleeves or, you know, we're not gonna make her look like a clown. And though I will always want a woman to look <laughs> a certain way. Woman always look, wants to look taller and slimmer and more elegant. Well, it sounds like you work with a lot of inspirational women. I do. And, and so yeah. for yourself, you know, you've become very successful. Any advice you'd give to the women in the audience about becoming a leader in your space and sort of the path that you took and uh, the characteristics, I think, that you find most important in leaders? Absolutely. I think we need to define what success is. Success to me is doing what you love and being, having passion and living your life so that you're exhausted with that passion. That to me is truly success. Um, in terms of being a leader, I think it's surrounding yourself with people who are better than you are. That takes strength and that takes courage and it takes, you know, you always have to, people are everything. 
You know, we work in the community and you really have to surround yourself with people who bring out the best. And in terms of leadership, live by example. If you're telling somebody they have to do that, make sure you can do it as well. And I think that's important. That's how people, you know, people don't work for a company. People work for other people. And I think it's important as a leader to be true to that, to be honest, to, to lead by example and, you know, collaborate with people, give people opportunities. You know, I think that's so important. And I have a, just a quote. Um, I have this amazing quote for all of you females by Madeline Albright. But she said, women who do not help other women have special place in hell. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason why she said that is because majority of women, they're not, they are not CEOs or CFOs or at the top of the I call it the food chain, is because other women sabotage them, not men. Women sabotage women. So if we stop doing that, there'll be more leaders out there. And our goal, I mean, we have a whole program. Um, it's called Contributor Program um, that I think is extremely important. Is I take women that perhaps are not in the news, or women who are just incredible leaders in their own right. Um, I wrote their names because I was Padma Warrior, who's with Cisco System. She is beyond amazing. She did. She was one of our first contributors, and I loved her strength, her passion, her vision, and how she made it to the top with just caring about other people. She never thought about herself. Do you know what I'm saying? Always doing my example. I have another female, Claire Rothman, who is amazing. She's 86 years old. She was the first, um, she was the head of Forum. Amazing woman and how they did it. And they did it through recognizing other women, never stabbing anybody in the back, caring for people, understanding, following through, and I think that's true leadership. And so on this contribu in this contributor program that we're doing, um, there's videos that you can watch, but they're just amazing women who, just simple. It's not about being complicated. It's about knowing who you are and being true to yourself, it sounds like. Absolutely. That's great. I wanted to make sure we had time to run the runway show and uh, yeah, make sure yeah. that you give yeah. us some commentary on that. Great. So, Anything you can give us uh, in terms of uh, ideas that, that, what are your favorite pieces in oh, this sure. runway show? So, okay, so let me tell you the inspiration so you kind of get an idea and then I'll walk you through it. So basically the inspiration started is um, I was at, in New York City where the runway shows are, but basically. So I was at um, ABC Carpets, which is one of my favorite stores. If you're ever in New York, you have to visit, but it's basically furniture, carpets, accessory, everything, and it's curated in such a beautiful way. I was so inspired, and so I went to the fifth floor, and there's amazing rugs. Uh, they're either rugs done from Eastern Europe, uh, Persia, Turkey, all over the world, basically. And what they do is they take and they're in the most gorgeous colors you've ever seen. And they, they look familiar. They look like they're traditional rugs, but they're not. And I was so impressed with the process, so I Googled it. And it's called Color Reform. And what they do is they take carpets that are damaged, so carpets that perhaps are not so great, or carpets that didn't make it to the A grade, and they bleach them out, dry them in the sun, and they re-dye them. And each carpet is one of a kind. And I thought that was so innovative. You know, anything, whether it's in fashion or tech, if you, what makes a company successful is passion, vision, and innovation. And they've done this with this carpets where they, each art, artist puts passion into it, the innovation is, you know, how they're done. It's just such a great process. So anyway, I was obsessed with it. So I took pictures, tons of pictures of um, the carpets and the prints that you're gonna see here are actually done from the carpet kind of pictures and inspiration. So we did graphic design, obviously, and printed it on silk. And then the other inspiration was, we're in California. So it's about sort of bohemian spirit. It's about woman, like I wanted her to just feel so beautiful, elegant, and airy, and I just wanted that bohemian style to come through. And then on the third note, it's my daughter just got married. Congratulations. Actually, next, last week. So it was, it, was, it was such a beautiful event, I have to tell you. It was, she was stunning, and yeah, it was, it was quite emotional. 
And anyway, so I, I, when we were working on this collection, I kept on thinking, so this is everybody that's walking down the aisle. <laughs> <laughs> the whole party, this is how I want. That's a finale that you're going to see. But that's how I want everybody. Of course, that's not what ended up happening. I was going to say, how much does she let you influence Remember, that? <laughs> in life, do not, you know, in life, it's, it's not what you want. It's, it's what you get, yeah. you know? <laughs> So very important, when we do shows, the first five models, this is their first show ever, meaning they don't. And I want to promote young woman here. Um, so sh this is just really beautiful. So we had a little bit of this kind of strength, the belt that they're wearing, which is like a um, karate belt. I felt like with everything being very feminine, it's nice to give it that strength. In fashion, you need opposite things. If something is very fragile, give it something hard. That's what makes it contemporary. So that's actually, oh, missed the dress. This is a perfect jumper until you turn around. <laughs> there you go. So this is your swimming jumper. <laughs> anyway, so this is, do you see a little peak where her shirt is? That's a little bit of the carpet kind of feel, the design, they're actually quite beautiful. And I love, I love all the trapunto stitching, which is done on these jackets. Now, do you know why models don't smile? Because you're supposed to, they're modeling clothes. They're like a hanger. So if they smile, you smile, then your attention goes off somewhere. And also, they walk kind of interesting. They walk like this a little bit. And the reason why, so the clothes don't wrinkle. And I love the idea of versatility and just, you know, having the vest um, being versatile. They're all reversible. Yeah. Now, where is she going, guys? Come on. I say to Starbucks. <laughs> I dare one of you to wear this to the corporate meeting. <laughs> In real life, it's a little higher. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine? I'm sure you'll get attention. They'll ask you. <laughs> but that's what it's all about, right? Great clothes open all doors. I also think that there's something really beautiful about surprises. Like when a woman comes towards you, you're looking, you know, most of us try to, or men, try to look at their face, you know, like, but when they turn around, there's always something. So I believe that the back sometimes is more important than the front because as they're walking away, everybody's looking. I love these models. They're so tall and so uncomfortable with their bodies. <laughs> you should see, it's so funny. I always, there's a little thing that they do. So I stand, I fix them before they come out. So I'm like, you know, like, and there's so much static spray in the back. Oh. <laughs> so you're just like spraying and you're fixing, and you're making sure. And they're like standing there like this. They're 17 years old, 18, 19, you know, half of them don't speak English, which is fantastic. <laughs> uh, so when they're just standing there, and then once the light hits them, they're like, this is them. It's okay. Then the light hits them, they're like. <laughs> it's like you're seeing them appear. It's so crazy. This is gorgeous. And so this is actually, again, from the carpets. They're like, ah. Oh. This, this woman, her name is Mijo, and she's amazing. She's from Macedonia. Do you guys even know where that is on the map? Google it. Uh, <laughs> but it used to be where Alexander the Great came. That, that country used to rule the world. Anyway. Peace. 
And again, they're just effortless pieces. You just put them on and go. You can put a denim jacket over it. You can put heavy boots with it. It's how you wear it. I always feel like, you know, you should dance in the rain in your clothes. And if you can't dance in the rain, then... Didn't you ever want to put a beautiful dress and just go swimming in it? <laughs> Do it. And by the way, we have to, um, for the runway shows, you know, the garments actually are fixed, but we can't really have everything open. You know, down the runway, you need to get that wow feeling for editors, you know, so you don't line the dresses most of the time and you leave things a little bit more open. Uh, but in real life, it's, it's much more um, safe. <laughs> yeah, she's gorgeous. I love how you've carried the theme of the belt throughout, too. It's yeah. Just, it adds that strength. It's great. You know, this collection is so interesting because from the beginning, from the first piece to the time that it actually makes it to the store, I see it like 30 times. And I know when something is good is when I'm not tired of it. Like, I'm still excited to go then and actually wear it. And that, to me, is when the collection really resonates. And this is all like handkerchiefs that just in, all down in chiffon that just cascade down. And this I just love. And see how the girls are tougher with more, the more feminine the clothes are, the tougher the girls are. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> There's no story behind it. <laughs> And see how beautiful she is, but the clothes then tight because she's too pretty. You put her in a sweet dress, and it just doesn't work. When I wake up, when this should be everybody's wedding song. Mm. So that was going to be my outfit for the wedding, but um, you can't wear white. <laughs> But that's a perfect bride. Isn't that cool? Can you imagine somebody that's like, yeah. I mean. And obviously, I love jackets, so. I was saying, Monica and I today, we look like we're from the rock band. Um, yeah, and this is so pretty. That's also like an amazing wedding dress. But of course, my daughter decided to wear something else. <laughs> and that's all handkerchiefs, too. Just. Again, they're not that low in real life. <laughs> and this is my angel dress. Those are wings. I thought if you ever want to fly. Yeah. And one of my good friends, Bo, just wore this um, to premiere in New York. But it's just so beautiful. You know, again, doesn't you don't need to show that much skin. It's about sort of just the flow of things. She's so nervous. I swear she's like. <laughs> now don't forget that this is the first show in New York Fashion Week. This opens up New York Fashion Week. And we had like people whipping, you know, like <laughs> <laughs> And it's 10 AM, so people probably didn't have enough coffee or maybe too much coffee. <laughs> They're going through some emotional. Right? So that was going to be my dress. And then for the wedding, but. Um, 
It wasn't about me, the wedding. <laughs> so, <laughs> although in my imagine that was that was going to be. Again, have fun with the clothes. Right. Let's enjoy it. So much fun. So funny, we asked the models, so what do you think when you're going down the runway? You know, what are you thinking? She's like, pizza. Where am I going to get my nails done? What do I have? I was like, really? Pizza, I know. Cookie, that's my husband. Now he's my muse. I know. Thank you so Thank much for the you. commentary on that. I mean, it definitely, I think, sheds a different viewpoint. And just analyzing, so you're not just seeing the clothes and how beautiful they are, but the contrast, you know, the, the belt, the lines, how they're very simple but mm -hmm. strong, and yet you've got the flowy component mm -hmm. with the chiffon. So congratulations. Thank you. I think we're all excited that it's the weekend and we can go shopping, right? <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to make sure we left some time for questions from the audience, if anybody has any for Lubo. Since you joined the company in 1991 and it's been to 2015 now, has the vision for the company kind of changed and uh, how are you actually contributing to driving it? And you know, what's the, your corporate story a little bit? Um, it has changed. Well, it hasn't changed. It has evolved. I think that um, in the beginning, you know, th the difference between BCBG and other company, it is design driven. It's not merchant driven. Do you guys know the difference between it? So, merchant driven is like Gap or um, Banana Republic or companies that you know you sort of produce based on the units. Like, it's a little bit more. Um, it's different. Design, we're design driven. So basically, we, we create things that we want to wear. So it's very different. And we, so with the times, and we've seen economically what happens, do you know what I'm saying? So you have to always change and evolve a little bit. You know, we had, at one point, we had 20 divisions. Then we went to like six divisions, you know. So you're constantly trying different things. When we originally started BCBG, uh, well, Max started BCBG. Let me clarify this. He started BCBG in 1989. When I joined the company in 1991, Max at the time was doing item business. He was doing pleated skirts, stirrup pants. He wasn't doing collections. When I joined the company, I realized that there's a huge void. At that time, there was either Donna Karen at the top or there was um, casual corner. There was nothing in between. I mean, the, you had a white space that was so, I didn't understand how you cannot make clothes in the between range. So we were one of the first contemporary companies uh, basically in America to create that type of fashion. With time, more people started going in that territory, so you had to kind of decide which other places, you know, you, you're constantly looking for void. And once you realize that a woman dresses based on her body shape, not based on trend, you start creating clothes that are versatile, that are right for her lifestyle. So you kind of evolve it. So you're constantly, you know, I don't believe in one particular formula. I believe you're always changing, evolving, and growing. So with my position in the company, I think as when I became creative director, now I'm more involved with marketing. So you have other departments start reporting to you because your vision is so direct. Um, so one thing in fashion is you don't want to be anybody else. Your DNA defines you. Like for example, Harvey Leger has a very distinct DNA. And I'm not going to start doing something for them that I think out of that 
alignment with BCBG as well. You know, I will not do like, I've been trying to do jeans though, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I will always stick to making a woman feel and look beautiful. You know, I will not make clothes that sort of doesn't do that and evolve. But my position in the company has grown in terms of how many departments report to me, which makes it very little time for me. <laughs> <laughs> More demands, right? <laughs> Just very little. My question is more on the career development side. Yes. So obviously we all work in tech and it can be more of a male dominated industry. And so I'm wondering what your experience is like as a female leader in such a female centric mm -hmm. industry and what that looks like as you kind of uh, rose the ranks and what that looks like now as maybe a female community where like you were saying, you're pouring into um, future female leaders. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, my situation is very different. Don't forget that I actually married Max, so I was already on top of food chain. Uh, but I have to say that, you know, I really, I wanted to learn. So just because you're, you have the possibility, the one thing I've learned, it, it is fashion is still very male domina dominated. You know, the bankers, uh, the real estate, everything is very male dominant. I think what you need to do is is really be there, be honest, do more than you need to do, and I think it's being present, communicate well. I mean, you know, men are very simple creatures, um, and I'll explain to you why they are simple because you know there were we bring men women create men and we bring them up and all they need is significance you tell them that they look good you tell them that they do well that the project that they did were great you align with them and you see the results happening do you know what i'm saying like i said you just have to they're not your You just communicate well, and that's it. You communicate well, you be open to their ideas, you show them your ideas. You know, when before I was at BCBG, I worked for a um, designer, and I remember leaving sketches every single day on her desk. She didn't, she didn't want any help, but I would leave it just because I thought this was a great idea, this was a great idea, maybe this. It's, it's really... We like to see passion. We like to see people who want to do more. We like to do that. And with that, you can really grow. I don't believe that nowadays, I think everybody's always looking for that next talent, that next person with great ideas, innovation. And also, put yourself away. If you think about me, 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 you're never going to get there. Like, if I think of, if I'm creating clothes to make money, I will fail every single day. You have to have a greater purpose. So if your purpose to, to, to get a higher level position, then you need to read the job description. You guys don't have job descriptions here, but you have to see what that person is doing and where what they're excelling at, do you know what I'm saying? And then you see, can I actually do that? We talked earlier about success and, you know, not a lot of people, it's very lonely at the top. You know, I'm, and if you're the type of per per person that likes to connect with people, collaborate, and, and, and you know, be together, and the whole thing, at the top sometimes when you have to make every decision, it's not always, um, it's not always right for everyone. I, I just want to just put it out there. As a woman, we like to collaborate. We like to share. We like to do different things. At the top, it's kind of you have to, like my husband, you know, a lot of times he'll make decisions that I totally disagree with, but I'll sit there and I'll talk to him about it. I'll have him explain to me why he made the decision so I can better support his vision, you know, and that's what makes a difference, not just saying, okay, I'll do it. No, don't just do it. You understand the whole, like the difference between I think a lot of people who are at the higher level, why they make perhaps smarter decision is not because they're smarter, it's because they see the whole thing. So they know that this person is already doing this and this person is already doing this and this is doing this so you can connect the dots better where as if you're only doing that, you can't see other parts. So I think in terms of growing as a leader, I think you want to make sure that you're supporting, learning, growing, read more, educate yourself. You know, in life, 
in nature, and anything that doesn't grow dies. Anything that doesn't contribute gets eliminated. And what I hear from that is you're also leaning on what some of the skills that women are strong at. Yeah. Collaboration, you know, listening, and, and communication, and pulling those ideas together. Yeah. I mean, if something goes wrong, instead of saying, oh, it went wrong, say, what can I do to make a difference right now? What can I do to fix this now? Not just walking away and saying, well, you know, it happened. No. It's not. You can make a difference. I mean, we at BCBG, we always say we're here to make miracles happen. You know, we really do. We make incredible things. And being here is pretty much a miracle right now. But, um, <laughs> but we do. We make it happen. So I have a question in regards to tech wearables. Um, how do you see that tying into your, your design in the future? And um, do you see that as really adding to women and your design and your vision? Well, I think you guys are innovators, so you tell me. <laughs> you know, because I think the tech word that, I mean, I've tried Fitbit, I've tried different things, you know, and I think right now my comfort zone is not that, but that's just me. You know, I'm actually looking to innovators for ideas and collaborating and really kind of connecting because I think that technology is not my strength, but I'm so curious, so <laughs> curious. I want to leave you, there's a great story that I want to tell you that, um, is really sweet. It's, um, and do you guys know a story about coffee bean? Not the coffee bean like coffee bean, like, <laughs> no? So when you take an egg, raw egg, and you put it in the boiling water, what happens? It gets hard, right? Come on. I don't cook, <laughs> but you guys should cook. We have Actually, you have more here. restaurants here. Yes, okay. We have a lot of cafeterias. So when you take a raw egg and you put it in the boiling water, it gets hard. When you take a carrot that's hard on the outside and you put it in the boiling water, what happens? And when you take a coffee bean and you take it and put it in the boiling water, what happens? It transcends, right? It creates something that is beautiful, that's desirable, that's delicious. I love coffee. So in the tough situations, are you going to be like an egg that's hard on outside, soft inside, but get harder? Are you going to be like a carrot that's really tough and get all mushy? Or are you going to be a coffee bean? and transcend and find other ways. And, you know, and so I think all of you are pretty much like coffee beans, because <laughs> otherwise you probably wouldn't be working at Google. <laughs> thank you very, thank very you. much for sharing your thoughts, your spring line, and uh, you, your, your thoughts on leadership. Really appreciate having thank you, you here. Thank you. Such a pleasure. Thank you, guys.